Today we are starting chapter four on Earth's dynamic surface and lesson one is Earth's moving surface. Now take a look at this map of the United States uh, and if you this is a, uh, a physical map so it's showing the uh, geographical features and three dimensions here. And if you look at it, you see how we've got mountain ranges and very large mountain ranges coming down here and then some mountain ranges here, but then we've got this real flat area here. What what makes the difference? Why why do we have this uh, you know very obvious change here? Why do we have flat areas and mountains? And we're going to look at uh, a scientific theory called plate tectonics plate tectonics are uh, the, the plate tectonics is the theory that earth's surface is broken into large rigid pieces that move with respect to each other rigid means it's it's uh it's not flexible um and we'll get into that why that's important in a little bit here um but let's look at the word tectonic. Uh, tectonic actually comes from the Greek word tekton, which means builder. Um, and we get our word architect from this word. Architect meaning uh, literally chief builder. Um, but tekton means builder. Uh, so keep that in mind when we talk about tectonic plates and how, how what does it have to do with building things? Now, so the idea here is we have these different um, plates, really, and they move around each other with each other. Um, so if one's moving uh, over top of the others, and we'll look at some of the different ways that they move and some of the different boundaries, but this is the idea between plate tectonic theory. And it really got started in 1912 with a scientist named Alfred Wagner, and um, he had the idea uh, came up with the idea of continental drift which we will discuss uh, in a little more detail later but the gist of it is he thought that uh, he noticed that the continents kind of fit together and uh, they there were fossil remains that were similar found in different coasts uh, particularly in Africa and South America and he said the only way that those uh, fossils could have gotten like that is if the continents once would have been all together and so that theory um, kind of was expanded on over the years and by the mid 1960s became what we now know as plate tectonic theory and this this has been added on over the years and uh, there's a number of uh, different pieces of evidence for this theory um, have to do with ocean ridges and um, fault lines and things like that, which we'll kind of discuss in uh, lessons and chapters to come here. Um, but we're going to look at, you know, how the, the movement of the different plates has caused things like volcanoes. Um, so which, you, you know, we even have active volcanoes today. And this has to do with plate tectonics and we can look at uh, ancient volcanoes and uh, see how the plates would have shifted and moved over millions of years we'll see how they are um, involved in forming mountain ridges so you have these long lines chains of mountains and and what how the movement of plates would have caused this and how they uh, have contributed to earthquakes um, for anybody who has lived in California or even visited, you know that uh, in Southern California, you're actually along a major fault line and it has caused uh, numerous earthquakes. Uh, so let's look at some of the basics around plate tectonics. Uh, and the, the next vocabulary word that's important, and we've actually used this a few times before, but we're going to uh, look at it in a little more detail is lithosphere lithosphere um, and this is sometimes this word is used to refer to the geosphere as a whole but 
uh, really the technical definition of the lithosphere is the rigid outermost layer of earth that includes the uppermost mantle and the crust so this is not all of the solid parts of the earth as a whole but it refers to a very specific part and we'll look at that in a second but I, let's look at the word lithosphere comes from two words uh, the Greek word lithos which means stone so you'll see that in words like neolithic uh, and again spira which we have seen repeatedly sphere which means globe or ball now so as we said the lithosphere is the rigid outermost layer of the earth so it contains both the crust so we have your oceanic crust and continental crust as well as the uppermost part of the mantle so that together which is rigid meaning it, it doesn't flex or or bend uh, very easily uh, this is our lithosphere the second part that's important is which again we've mentioned this already and we've seen it a little bit is the asthenosphere uh, and this is the partially melted portion of the mantle below the lithosphere so this comes from two greek words again asthenes which means weak and sphira again sphere globe or ball now it's important that we understand what we mean by weak so as opposed to rigid meaning it's not flexible um, let's look at that definition again it's partially melted uh, so it's partially molten or uh, we use the word plastic meaning it, it it allows it to flow so remember the lithosphere is rigid doesn't flex doesn't doesn't bend while the asthenosphere is weak it's it's partially melted and so let's see how they work together here so we have the lithosphere solid kind of not really floating but that that's probably the best idea that that we can have on the semi-solid asthenosphere so this semi-solid allows the movement of the lithosphere of our different tectonic plates now we'll get into um, you know subduction and some of the the different uh, ways that it moves as we continue but I just want you to see this is the way that they are set up so again a senosphere the semi-solid portion of the upper mantle and then the uppermost part of it and the crust being very rigid very solid kind of floating on top of it now the last thing I want you to see in this lecture are the major tectonic plates um, and we'll get into some of this uh, as we look at uh, the way that they've moved and kind of the history of movement and measurement but I want you to be familiar with them so they include both um, continental and oceanic crust but where we see the the borders these are places that there are faults uh, ridges uh, mid-ocean ridges things that we'll discuss later uh, so most of the continents have their own plate which is why they are kind of separated the way that they are um, the exception being Europe and Asia uh, being basically one land mass now we separate it because of political reasons uh, but it's one land mass known as the Eurasian plate um, and then each of the oceans kind of has their own uh, plate uh, or kind of region uh, with the exception of the Atlantic there um, you have kind of a convergence of different plates uh, but as you look at that and you look at the continents and their shapes you can kind of see where they might have fit together and how they're moving and I want you to keep all of that in mind as we continue on through this chapter and the next and the next few lessons and uh, just kind of understand uh, the the basics of plate tectonic theory